Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the June 2021 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made them and get some tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll consider clicking on that subscribe button below and ringing that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I shared with you the brand new sheet load of cards, June 2021. In that video, I talked about the newest file, showed you my first set, and told you how you can download the printable for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. Now, if you haven't got a chance to watch that yet, I do have it linked in the description box below. Today, I'll be showing you how I made that first set. And don't forget, all of my collaborators will be sharing their first sets as well. Make sure once you're done here that you visit all of their links in the description box below, see what they made, and leave them some love. I know that they would appreciate you stopping by. Before I get started on that process, I want to share a look at the main supplies that I'll be using today. If I do add anything else later, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Before we get to that process, I want to share a look at the main supplies that I'll be using today. If I add anything later on in the video, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover, but if I ever leave you with any questions, you can always leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. This month's supplies, you need four 6x6 six six pattern papers, three 8.5x11 cardstocks, two for matting and one for your sentiment. And actually for the sentiment, you can use scraps of cardstock if you want to. You don't really need a full sheet. And then you'll need four 8.5x11 solid cardstocks for the card bases. On my printable, I show two pieces of two different pattern papers but you can definitely use four different and that's actually what I do for my cards today. This helps make them look just a little bit different from each other. These are the four sheets that I chose and these are all from the fine and dandy six by six paper pad from my mind's eye. Now this pad unfortunately is no longer available but I know that many of you have lots of six by six pads you can put to good use. My plan right now is to kind of use these two together and these two together. But as I cut them down, I might see if these will go together and vice versa. It'll just take a little bit of playing around to know that. For my mats, I chose two pieces of blue cardstock that matched one of the shades in the paper pad. And I will be switching my cards up just a little bit today. And I'm going to be using 36 pound vellum for my card bases. That means that I will need a spot on the inside of the card to write my personal message because you have to have special markers or pens to write on vellum. So I want to make sure that if I use it or if I give them away and my recipient uses it, they don't have to have any special writing utensils. So I got out two pieces of white cardstock to put inside of my card. And like I mentioned, I'll be using the 36 pound vellum. Now, while this isn't as thick as normal cardstock, it usually does stand up on its own. And I just like the translucent look and feel it gives to the cards. You know, I love clear cards and this is almost second to that. You know, I love some vellum too. The instructions do call for that one piece of cardstock for your sentiment, but I actually created a file that I print and then cut out on my silhouette. Now, if you are a channel member, in a couple days, I will have a free printable for you that you could use just in your printer and then use a punch, like a two inch punch for each of these or a two inch die. Or if you have a digital cutting machine, you could use the SVG file on that to print and cut those out. 
I just set up four different sentiments and I know there are 12 here and we're only going to yield eight cards. I just figured I would save those extra four and make the most of my card stock. Let's get crafty. I started today by printing and cutting my sentiments on the silhouette. It was just so handy to have this file ready to go. Then I brought in my trimmer so I could cut my cardstock and my pattern paper. I'm going to show you here how I cut one sheet of the vellum. This will eventually be my card bases and I just cut that in half to five and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. Then I brought in my two pieces of CS1 so I could cut down my mats. Now this is something you'll want to watch pretty carefully. Before we can cut the pieces at the top, we need to cut off the bottom a one and a quarter inch strip. Then that piece gets cut in half. If you try to cut the pieces at the top first, you will actually slice the bottom in the wrong dimensions and you're going to have to bring in then another piece of cardstock. After I had this strip off the bottom, I then cut two strips that were three and a quarter inches wide and then a final strip that was one and a quarter inches. Now you'll see here I had a little bit of an issue since that strip was so skinny getting it lined up with the one and a quarter inch. So what I would suggest is cut the one and a quarter inch off the bottom and then cut your one and a quarter inch tall strip before you cut down those four pieces that mat that rectangle pattern paper. I figured that out a little bit too late. I cut that second piece of cardstock in the exact same way. Now it's time to cut those four pieces of six by six pattern paper. You'll notice that we'll be cutting each of those into four pieces and then the two pieces at the bottom, piece B, will actually be cut in half later. I start with this first piece by slicing it in half to three inches wide and then I cut four and a quarter inches off the top. This left me needing a one inch strip off the bottom of each of those pieces and again it is kind of skinny and hard to maneuver. For this I did bring in a piece of scotch blue removable tape to hold it in place but for the next sheet you'll see that I smartened up just a little bit like I should have done previously with the card stocks. For the next sheet of 6 by 6 paper, it started out the same where I cut it at 3 inches wide, but this time when I stacked them on top of each other, I cut that 1 inch tall strip first. That way, I just have to finish cutting off the top to 4 and a quarter inches wide. This was much easier. I finished cutting the last two pieces in this same exact way. This next step is probably not one you'll need to do, but because I need a space inside of my vellum cards to write, I brought in two pieces of white cardstock and I cut these so I had six pieces that were three inches wide by four and a quarter inches tall. And I just cut these down until I ended up with eight total pieces. This will be hidden by the matted pattern paper on the front. Here is another step that you might need to do, but I did want to show you this in case you do ever use vellum for a card base. I brought in my score board and I am going to score a line down the center of each of these card bases, right at four and a quarter inches. I have found if I don't score my vellum that it kind of cracks when I fold it. Now you will want to test out your vellum to see if you should fold it with the raised edge in or the raised edge out to see which gets you the best results with the least cracking. That is one of the downsides to using vellum as a card base. Now I'm going to show you how to mat each piece of the pattern paper and we're going to start with that strip across the center. Like I mentioned before and like the diagram shows, you are going to cut that piece in half to spread it all the way across the four and a quarter inches of that smaller piece of blue cardstock. For this first one, I just cut it in half pretty much straight up and down and then I added one half to each side of that strip. 
Now this was about the time when I realized, ooh, what if I didn't have that turned the right way and my cut isn't perfectly straight? Now luckily I do think I figured it out, but you'll notice here starting with the second strip, I actually cut it at a small angle. This way I definitely know which is the straight edge that goes against the side of the strip. So I would suggest trying this if you think that your cut might not be perfectly straight vertically. Either way that you choose to cut it, your 2 inch circle sentiment should cover that gap in the middle. To mat the larger size pieces of pattern paper, it is just simply adding adhesive to the back and then centering it on the larger piece of cardstock. I finished with the strips and the rectangles until I had all of these pieces matted. Once those were all done, I piled each piece up on my desk and then I mixed and matched those for kind of little card kits or I put the pieces together that would go on each of the card fronts. Since a majority of the pieces were done, it was time to start assembling the cards. The white piece of cardstock got adhered to the center of the inside of the card base and then I placed the larger piece of pattern paper centered on the front and you'll see that this hides the white piece on the inside. Finally for this part, I took my little strip and adhered that across the center of the card, but you'll see here I put it a little bit above center. This is one place where you can make these your own and adjust it to fit your sentiment and or image. You'll see on the next card that I go ahead and change up where on the card I place the band across the middle. While I work on assembling some more of the cards, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. I am getting a little bit of help today with my question. One of the perks of channel membership is you can submit questions for the QOTV. So today, Karen C. would like to know, when making your card bases, do you prefer using colored cardstock or white? If you're going to answer today's question, make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV somewhere in your answer so I know that you've answered it and want me to see it. For myself, because I'm frugal, we'll call it, I usually do white card bases or sometimes I will do ivory or off-white just because I buy those in bulk, but I try to avoid using my colored cardstock as the base just because it costs a little bit more. Here's a look at the card so far, and off camera I decided that I wanted my white sentiment circle to stand out just a little bit more. So I brought in one of my doily dies and a piece of green cardstock that I thought coordinated with the green in the pattern paper. Off camera I cut eight of these, and then we're just going to layer these on top of each other with some adhesive. After seeing the debut video earlier today, I had some subscribers leave comments wanting to know where these doily dies came from. Unfortunately, they were a set that I bought from Paper Tray Ink years ago. Now I will link the item on the Paper Tray Ink website in the description box below. You can no longer buy it, but at least you would get an idea of what they look like if you want to try an alternative company or maybe try to find them used. Because the cards were pretty flat so far, once all of those circles were layered up, I brought in my 3 quarter inch width foam tape, added a piece to the back of each of the circles, and then I placed them onto the card fronts, making sure to cover up the opening in the middle of the band across the center. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the June 2021 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit all of my collaborators whose links you can find in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. 
I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.